chapter 4 but why Afghans discovering underlying research motivations Sunday November 11 2012 why Afghanistan people often ask me when I tell them about my PhD research project depending whom I'm speaking with I notice my answer varies this is because this seemingly curious, innocent question comes with a baggage of assumptions, prejudices, as well as critiques. Not just towards developmental and humanitarian work by an outsider, but also of war, safety, politics and religion. Finding an answer to why Afghans or why Afghanistan is like finding a reason for being, which in itself is an epistemological and ontological inquiry. Can one ever know? I know I did not wake up from bed one day and suddenly exclaim my purpose in life. It was not a eureka moment. Neither was it a calling, as some people term it. I didn't seek a higher purpose, religious or otherwise, and receive a revelation. At least not in my conscious memory. The causes or reasons for me are never linear. They don't always make sense, but they did. Somehow. Because I get bombarded by this question all the time, I feel the need to reflect on my cognitive processes prior to and during my research undertaking. This reflexive prose seeks to look at the tapestry from a critical distance, while simultaneously identifying individual threats that have become interwoven. How? That's what I intend to find out in this writing exercise. 1. Initial PhD application an applied theatre project with refugees. Having worked in schools and prisons in Singapore, I thought it was best to move beyond familiar territories. If I wanted to further specialise in applied theatre, I did not want to be pigeonholed literally behind prison walls. It had been the most enriching years of my teaching career, but to specialise in prison theatre again seemed a little too myopic. At least, that was what I thought. I wanted to expand my horizons and see beyond our Singaporean shores. Following very closely to Professor James Thompson's work, as well as Professor Michael Belfour's and Dr. Jenny Hughes, whose writing had evolved from prison theatre to theatre in war zones, I began to be interested obliquely in refugee concerns in war zones. What would it be like to work in a refugee camp? I thought it provided me an appropriate platform to combine applied theatre, drama education and drama therapy philosophies and practices. So I made initial investigations starting with statistics provided by the UN Refugee Agency, UNHCR. I remember counting the refugees from all the African countries in 2010 and discovered that the refugees from Afghanistan were appallingly close. In fact, I vaguely recall Afghanistan having more refugees than all of Africa's combined. I could have been wrong, so I rechecked my figures. Based on UNHCR's statistics in 2012, the total number of refugees from Africa is 3.3 million, as compared to Afghanistan's 2.6 million, a difference of 668,157. Although my memory of numbers was not entirely accurate, I remember feeling shocked at the numbers. The entire African continent has slightly more refugees than Afghanistan as a country. An unnerving thought for me, who has lived in relatively comfortable middle-class settings in an increasingly wealthy and prosperous country. That probably sparked my whole inclination and interest in and towards Afghanistan. Guilty? Not really. But I remember being utterly disappointed that Singapore did not even have a UNHCR office to help refugees in South Asia. I wrote to the UNHCR office in Malaysia as they had a vacancy then, but they only employed Malaysians. So the Applied Theatre project, regardless of target population, could not come to fruition. Again, 
Afghanistan tugged at my consciousness. Of course, I had other strong political sentiments against the Bush administration at that time, but they were not explicit to my initial PhD application. Harry Ante, a wonderful colleague and friend of mine, suggested Christmas Island, a former Singaporean offshore island that had been sold to Australia, which now houses refugees, some of whom are Afghans. Wonderful lead, I thought, not too far from home. <laughs> and so this was how it started. 3. Omar Ibrahimi, my first Afghan friend. As if on the Sherlock Holmes trail, I contacted Dr. Wee, also known as Hakim in Afghanistan, through email, but received no response. Coincidentally, he was returning to Singapore to give a lecture at the Middle East Institute at the National University of Singapore, Bukit Timah campus on 25th August 2010. The two-part lecture was titled Taliban or Us, A Ground Narrative from Afghanistan, Part 1, and An Equal Humanity is Here, Part 2. In less than 19 days, I would be leaving Singapore for my PhD studies, so this golden opportunity to meet Hakim could not be let up. Naturally, I registered for the event. I arrived early that day but sat quietly in the audience as he was talking with other members on the panel. I observed him respectfully from a distance and cannot help but sense a very down-to-earth, compassionate man donned in a white tunic with a light blue scarf. Finally, he shared his experiences through a powerfully moving narrative with photographs. He also talked about his struggles and acknowledged the people in the room who had supported him, especially his parents. During the Q&A, one man raised his hand and said he was an Afghan and was touched by the lecture. Omar Ibrahimi was his name. While Hakim was still busily entertaining others after the session was over, I introduced myself to Omar and explained what I was intending to do. He was an articulate young man and critically queried what I was doing. He explained some of the bureaucracies within the Afghan civil service system and the challenges I would face if I got there. Omar generously offered a hand. He said he had contacts and told me to email him my proposal. Hastily, I drew up a proposal documenting the various ways to apply theatre in Afghanistan. I even said in my email to Omar, quote, All I want to do is humanise the situation there and if possible help the communities find a sense of hope again. In my proposal, you would notice that drama is used for personal therapy and healing, community engagement and capacity building, as well as a platform for creative problem solving." Unquote. Reading this again in retrospection, I cringe, noticing the incredibly naive perspective I had adopted, peppered with a sting of arrogance in what I assumed would help the Afghan people. What an audacious claim! Nevertheless, Omar became my first Afghan friend. 4. Heroic research or just an academic exercise? Admittedly, there is something gratifying when people think I'm helping to save the world. It is a noble cause. I have had Mother Teresa as one of my inspirational Catholic role models while growing up until I was alerted to the controversies around donations. According to Christopher Hitchens in The Missionary Position, Mother Teresa in theory and practice, an unethical question around her humanism was raised. Quote, did Mother Teresa raise and improve the quality of care and possibly extend lifespan in light of the donations pouring in from around the world, which became unaccounted for? Unquote. 
this is deeply problematic. Do I want to be associated with unethical practices? No. Even if financial accountability were in pristine order, humanitarian safe the world projects also run the risks of undermining the good intentions they started with, i.e. harming the local economy.